So today we have come up north of Yilan um, to an area called Lai Lai, area of rocky outcrops along the shoreline of the coast. Um, so we're exploring this area today because we want to develop um, a geology field trip for um, school students where they can not only just see what's there and be told about it but actually have some hands-on activities to help them um, see what's here, make measurements, make comparisons and investigate a little bit themselves with a bit of guidance so that they can start thinking about um, how to interpret their observations and come to some um, insights of their own rather than just being told what uh, everything is all about by an expert or a teacher. This area is uh, quite extensive and you can see these layers are dipping um, at an angle and some of them are sticking up and some of them are more worn away so we have alternating hard and soft layers of mudstone and fine-grained sandstone I think. So the the hard layers forming the, these small bluffs and cliffs, the soft layers more broken and shaly underneath uh, forming the areas that have been scooped out and eroded more easily. So here we've got a beautiful bit of coastal erosion with some sea stacks, uh, some sea cliffs behind us, um, some quite heavy jointing in the rocks. Um, which means that when they break apart, they often break apart along the joints, which are lines of weakness. And they were formed as these rocks decompressed from being deep under the earth to being gradually uplifted to the surface due to erosion of the overlying material. And then this wide shore platform, which is a bit crisscrossed with some faults and this, the beds that you can see in some places form a beautiful curve so these beds have not only been tilted up from their original horizontal position but they have been folded slightly as well as tilted. So one thing we can do with students here is firstly to get them to do some drawing to sort of observe the make observations about the general area, uh, the general features and then we could challenge them to find some faults and measure the offsets of the faults so how much the faults have displaced the rock on either side um, they can look for fossils we haven't found many but these are sedimentary rocks and there's no reason to think that there shouldn't be fossils in them somewhere why does a wave cut platform form like this so that would be a question for the students to think about how do we get such a smooth surface out of rocks which are actually tilted we're looking for questions to ask these students a bit like that. We want them to interpret what they see and try to think about the processes that have created this coastal landscape. So we're just a little bit further north on the Lai Lai coast and right here is a beautiful dike, an igneous intrusion, sticking up like a wall through the surrounding um, sediments. So this is a classic example of a dike and what's great about it is you can see uh, behind me that it's offset by a fault. Uh, in fact there are several faults cutting through this dike that's offset it. This is a really brilliant example for students. We've got sedimentary layers, we've got faults, we've got a dike. Um, there's lots of geological features here to investigate. There's just lots to look at. So I'm just going to show you now what this dike looks like close up and because it's harder rock it's sort of um, not been eroded away as quickly as the surrounding softer shaly stuff um, if you look at the rock of the dike you can see that it's got crystals quite large white crystals near the middle but as you go to the edges they get they just kind of disappear so the material at the edges is quite fine and then you can see that lighter brown color where the dike was chilled on the very edge of itself. So here's another example over here. Um, you've got coarse material in the middle, some crystals, and then as you go to the edge, it cooled more quickly. The crystals didn't have time to form and on the very edge is a nice chilled area about four centimeters thick or something like that and then down 
below, if you look at the sedimentary rock, you can see that it's very dark near to the dike. It's been baked, it's more fractured compared to a little, you know, a few tens of centimeters away, maybe 30, 40 centimeters to the side. It's a little of a, got a different appearance. It's not quite so dark, so it's not been baked so much. So there's some of that baked sedimentary rock and the chilled margin of the dike and the more crystalline large crystals in the center of the dike and over here we can see the offset of the dike and you can actually see the fault that's offset the dike with Sini checking it out in the distance. So that fault can be traced through the sedimentary layers. So that does tell us that the dike was emplaced before the faulting happened rather than the dike pushing up through weaknesses in the crust than being offset by finding slightly different places to push up. There's one part of the dike coming down here and then it stops, comes to a stop and it continues over there and along and across the beach. There's several of these offsets because of faults. So just a couple of things that you could do here on this beach with a class of students uh, that come to mind. You could get them to survey the dike to measure the largest offset or even to measure all of the offsets um, caused by faults and then add them up and even average them. Um, they could also take a, a really close look at the dike without any information from you initially so that they draw the, um, the rock from ac you know, across the dike from one side to the other to see if their observation of the color changes and the, the crystal changes in the rocks um, would be uh, detailed enough. I always think that drawings are an excellent way to increase observation of detail and a good drawing is something you can refer to back in the classroom or back at home when you're no longer at the outcrop. Of course we could just take photographs and that's valuable but it doesn't force you to look. In fact taking photographs can be a really good way not to bother looking. So I um, once uh, a drawing has been made, the students should also label the drawing, what it is, what the scale is, what the date is, where they are, so that the information is complete for somebody who has never been there. When they see the drawing, they'll know what it's all about. There's plenty to do here to keep a class busy. And then the f important part of it is the follow up back in the classroom, which is the opportunity to make sure that everybody in the class gets the maximum learning out of the trip.